Hi, I'm Paul Holtz, and welcome to today's tutorial on Pinnacle Studio. Now, we're going to be using Studio 10 in this, but this really can be used with any of the earlier versions that had the chroma key capabilities or the keyframing capabilities where you could do the pan and scan. What I'm going to do today is show you how to use an actual element. In this case, we're going to use a baseball to wipe between two scenes. What we're going to do is, where the two clips are butted up, we're actually going to, on our overlay track, we're actually going to have a, ball, a baseball fly past it right where the two cut, and the baseball will fill the screen for a second, and as it goes by, you'll cut to the next video. So it's you'll see it on TV all the time. Uh, but once again, it's called an object wipe or an animated wipe. Now remembering that we're going to be using a baseball today, but you can use virtually any graphic at all. Well, let's go to Google because I don't have a baseball graphic, so let's just type in baseball. And I guarantee you on their image search somewhere, there's going to be one. So let's just grab one. We'll go to images and we'll hit search. And let's go to uh, a large image size because I want the baseball to actually be uh, pretty, pretty big. Let's just pick something here. Let's see, I don't have anything here. Let's try 18. There we go. Okay. Um, once again, these are, these are larger sizes. You can see down at the bottom how big they are in pixels. Like this one's 1050 by 1035. It's a little bit more old fashioned than I want. I want a more modern looking baseball that's clean. So what I'm going to do is pick this one. Now when you pick graphics to do this sort of a, an effect with, what you want to do is always make sure that you pick something that's larger than the video screen size that Studio uses. Remember, normal video resolution is 720 pixels by 480 pixels, okay? So it's 720 wide by 480 pixels tall. Now, if you go back here to this baseball, you'll see that it's 855 by 855. What that means is it's bigger in, when it's at full resolution or 100% resolution, it actually is bigger than our frame size, which means we can cover the whole window with the baseball instead of artificially having to blow it up using the, uh, the zoom control within pan and scan. So let's just go ahead and click on this baseball here. What we're going to do is we're going to go full size image and we're going to right click on the baseball and save the picture as it's a JPEG. I'm going to put it under my internal video drives here under Studio 10, and we'll say large baseball. So we'll go large baseball. And then what we're going to do, so what I've got Photoshop already opened up, and what we need to do is we need to prepare this graphic, okay? So let's go ahead. We've got large baseball right here. And there are two different ways of using keying within Studio. Whenever you want to cut out uh, an element, you use a chroma key here, which would have either maybe green or blue as a background color around the object, or you use what's thought, called a 32-bit image. The same exact way that your text editor works. Whenever you put text over live video, you know how there's no background, it actually overlays properly? That's actually a 32-bit image. The text editor automatically lays what's called an alpha channel. Just remember that an alpha channel is automatically calculated in the text editor. Since it's not in Photoshop, we're going to actually apply an alpha channel to protect the baseball. We want that to be cut away so we can overlay that over our live video. So once again, I'm using Photoshop here to do this today. So we're going to prep it using uh, Photoshop two different ways. One with a green background and one with a true alpha channel. Whenever you can apply an alpha channel, it always makes for a cleaner key or cutaway, if you will, over your live video. So that's always the preferred method. If you don't have a paint program that can apply uh, an alpha channel um, or layers, uh, then you would want to prepare it with a green background and then use your chroma key to cut it away. So we've got our uh, baseball opened up in Photoshop. I've selected my magic wand. And what I want to do is I want to select just those pixels that are behind the baseball. And you want to turn on contiguous because you don't want it selecting some of the whites that are within the baseball. So what we'll do is we'll just select around this white area. Now what we want to do is right now we'll, we'll create a baseball uh, with the green background. Since this area is actually selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under Edit, and I'm go, going to select Fill. And what I want to do is I want to pick a color, okay? But what I want to do is select 0 is my red, 255 for green, and 0 is my blue. That's a perfect green 
background now. Now theoretically, we're done with this one if you're going to just use it in the chroma key environment. And for the folks that want to use the chroma keyer, you can skip ahead. But I'd, I'd like you to watch the next step in case you have a program like Photoshop or CorelDRAW or one of the many other programs that actually work with different layers, kind of like your studio does, where you can put multiple layers over the top of one another like text over a video. You can do the same thing in a graphics package like this. So what we're going to do now, because we do have Photoshop, is we're going to create that alpha channel instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to edit and I'm going to do an undo fill. And um, what I'm going to do is go down here to a, a quick mask it's called, which is also an alpha channel. Now you'll see that the baseball itself has the red uh, representation of the mask on it. Right now, if I was to bring this into studio, it would only show a big hole here through to the video. All of this white in this area would actually be protected and the baseball would be discarded. So that's just the opposite of what I want to do. So let's go back and turn off the mask and let's go under Select and Inverse. What that will do is it will, instead of selecting just the white, it's now selecting just the baseball. Now we'll apply the mask in Quick Mask, and you'll see the red representation out here. Remember, what's under this little red representation now is what's going to be discarded. Now what we want to do then is we want to save this, and we want to save it as a type of a format called a targa file if possible. Because a targa file allows you to have an alpha channel, once again, that adds another 8 bits of information that would allow this transparency information to be kept. And that's what this alpha channel is all about. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say large baseball with alpha and that's it. And we're going to save it as a 32-bit image again. And we're done. So let's go back to studio. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the green baseball for you folks that want to use your chroma keyer. What we're going to do is we're going to use the chroma keyer uh, in conjunction with your pan and scan to actually do this. Once again, two video clips. We're going to zoom the baseball to where it fills the screen just as it's zooming by the two clips cut from one to the other. Okay, so once again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag my green baseball into my overlay track. And what I want to do is I want to shorten this up because I want this transition to be actually pretty fast. So this is going to be a pretty short clip. Now, notice how what I've done here is this, approximately the center of my baseball is where these two clips actually have their cut points. So what we want to do is make sure that approximately the center of that is right there. Because once again, we're going to fly the baseball right over where these two cut. So let's double click on the baseball. Let's go to my overlay section. Uh, we're, right now we have our picture in picture tab selected. Let's go to full screen. And then the next thing we're going to do is go to the chroma key tab. And what you want to do is you want to use your picker to grab this green area to actually cut that away. So that's now chroma keyed properly over our background image. Now, if we go over to our uh, properties screen, this is where your pan and scan is. The first thing we want to do is blow the baseball up a little bit, okay, to where it just fills the screen. You see how you can't see the little kids anymore? So the next thing that we want to do is we want to animate it from start to end. We're going to set the first keyframe. Remember, you have two keyframes, an in point and an out point. Um, on Studio. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to grab this. And we're going to push this to the left to where it's just off the screen. And then that's going to be our end point or our starting point. Then our end keyframe, we're going to push that off to the right. Just till it's off the screen. So there you go. And now you'll see when I scrub the play bar, pretty cool, huh? It's a very simple thing to do. You can actually see where the cut point is. You have to look pretty close. Don't forget, you could always add a little dissolve in here too, in case you kind of get any weird little flashing in these uh, in these little corners. Okay, but in essence, that's the effect. Let's go ahead and play that real quick. Now, actually, it works the same way with the targa file, except you don't have to worry about any of the chroma key functions. So let's uh, go back in. Let's close this. This time what we're going to do is we're going to grab our large baseball with alpha, put it on our overlay track again, 
And this time you'll see that automatically the background is cut away. We don't have to do any chroma key work in because it's a 32-bit alpha channel that's already cutting through here that's protecting the baseball. And it once again works exactly the same way as your text editor. What I've done is I've dragged this on the timeline. Here's our two cut points for our next two clips. Remember, I've shortened this up a little bit. And uh, what I want to do is put the center of the baseball approximately in the area where the cut is between the two clips. Let's double click on the baseball itself. And once again, we're just going to start this by zooming in. Let's actually turn off animate because we don't want to animate the zoom. We're going to blow this up again. We're going to animate from the start now. Push it off to the left. Actually, let's just go down like this. Let's do something a little different. Let's put it in the corner. Uh, lower left corner, and then we're going to set the end point, and we're going to just push it up in the upper right corner this time. Once again, let's go ahead and play this back. See how that works? Pretty cool. And if, um, once again, if you don't like that little flash that's in the back, you can always go back in, turn it off, reset, zoom it in a little bit more to totally fill it, and remember, what's cool about this is, let's say you're talking about Timmy's baseball game and you're actually using this uh, for a Little League wipe or something like that. You could put Timmy's name on the baseball, you know, using your text editor or Photoshop, whatever, whatever your paint program was, to, and, and maybe put the date of it. as So every, every time it transitions, people reminded which game it was, what the date was. You know, get creative with it. So once again, we're, we're zooming in so we can't see any edges at all. We're going to animate from the beginning. Go ahead and push it down here from the bottom, all the way through the top, and there you go. Scrub through that, and there is your transition. There's one more thing I want to show you. Um, there is what's called a truly animated wipe. It's where you actually go in and create an animated baseball that's actually spinning um, and use that as your wipe as well. And let's go ahead and play this, and you'll see what happens here. Yeah. This is the one that I want to use. You see how we've got a spinning baseball? Let's just go ahead and play that. And you see how it comes by just kind of like we did with the other baseballs, except this one is really animated. Let's go ahead and grab this guy. And once again, what we're going to do is we'll go in, double click on it. We'll go into our, and we're dropping this onto our overlay screen again, folks. We want this to be full screen. We want to grab the chroma key clip out the green background, and now when the baseball comes by, and once again, our timing's a little off on that, so there's, there's the full size of the baseball, so I want to actually grab this clip and move it over a little bit. Let's go ahead and play that back. So once again, that's an actual animated wipe. Now, this can be done with any still objects like we were saying, uh, just like we showed you. You could be using, maybe you're doing a corporate business video and you're cutting between two people on cell phones. You could actually uh, grab a graphic or take a still of, or a digital still on a, your digital camera of a, uh, uh, a cell phone and use the cell phone as the cut as it comes flying by, something like that. But once again, if you're going to do animated graphics, we have a lot of them here at Class on Demand for sale. They're actually pretty cheap for studio users. They're about 40 bucks, And there's a whole bunch of them. There's sports wipes like for uh, with baseballs, soccer balls, footballs, all that sort of stuff. But once again, we're not here to just sell you stuff. You can make your own. That's the whole point of this tutorial. So uh, once again, I'm Paul Holtz. Let me know what you think of it. Leave some comments on Romsky's Rams uh, website for me. And uh, you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.